Hi, my name is Jerry Wise. I'm a therapist at Family Tree Counseling Associates in Carmel, Indiana, on the north side of Indianapolis. And I'd like to share with you this video entitled, Learning to Trust Again. This video is about retrusting, which is a very big topic, particularly for me, in working with couples on a regular basis because oftentimes trust has been broken within marital couples and we find that uh, happens frequently and many struggle with learning to trust again. I wanted to talk about some of the elements and dynamics that go into and what are needed for trusting again. All of us have experienced having our trust broken at one time or another in our lives. And we have been lied to, cheated on, betrayed, talked about behind our backs, used, abused, uh, people have failed us, dropped us, rejected us. We have been burned, let down, a target of unexpected reactivity, and pushed away when we needed to be embraced. All of these type of experiences can create trust issues where we don't feel trusting of others or we don't feel trusting of the world around us. These, in, these events in our lives create a fear of trusting and a lot of people come and ask for help with how can I learn to trust again or ask the question, can I ever trust again? The level of mistrust we experience depends upon how frequent, how painful, how vulnerable, or how toxic the betrayal was in our lives. Often trust issues are stubborn to heal because our mistrust events are layered within us. In other words, we have had mistrust events that have occurred from very early in our life to the middle parts of our lives to currently. And so we have layers of mistrust. Stubborn mistrust can exist because we experience betrayal of those we trusted in our childhood. Physical abuse, sexual abuse, uh, or even simply just not being able to feel supported by a parent when we have had struggles and we felt betrayed when we haven't been supported and needed that. So often childhood presents us with uh, mistrust events. Second of all, repeating of these experiences in our adolescence or early adulthood. We were cheated on or lied to or betrayed um, made fun of by those we trusted, all kinds of events in which mistrust was involved or betrayal. And these repetitions build on the earlier mistrust events that occurred in our lives. And then thirdly, when people come to see me, they've had a current or present betrayal, something that has just happened in their marriage or in their lives or at work, and we have a repetition again of the mistrust events in our current relationships. Uh, and that could be from parents, from spouses, from our children. Um, and because of those event events, people have come in to seek counseling or seek help. So now we're talking about three layers of mistrusting events in our lives. So when we are, uh, when our spouse cheats on us, we experience a lifetime of betrayal and hurt. And that's why it's often so very painful. Because when we have been betrayed, we then hook into all the other previous betrayals that have not been healed within our lives. So how do I heal my trust issues? How do I learn to trust again? What elements are needed to learn to trust again? Or what processes are needed? And I thought I would share some of those with you in this video today. 
And I call this process, this is the learning to retrust. Often the reason we get all caught up in betrayal dramas and those betrayal events in our lives is because we are missing in us things that are important prior to the betrayal happening. In other words, we haven't been prepared. We, haven't, we have missed certain elements that are needed that in some ways might be prophylactic or keep betrayals from happening in our lives. First of all, low self-worth attracts untrustworthiness in others. And I think that's a maxim that I think is important. When you have been hurt or betrayed, often that tells me something about you. Not that you caused the betrayal, not that you wanted the betrayal to happen, not that you caused your betrayer to go betray you, but it does tell me something about you. And often it tells me that there are things missing in your sense of self that are not there and needed for you to have a healthy life. Second of all, mistrust attracts misworthy behavior. When we look to others to resolve our trust issues, this is a setup for trouble. And oftentimes we get married or try to find a spouse who can re help resolve our trust issues within us. That leads to problems. It leads often to more mistrust or betrayal within the relationship. And so we cannot expect trust issues to be fixed by someone else. Second of all, levels of self-care and self-differentiation must change for retrusting to occur or for retrusting to happen. Often our self-care, our self-worth, our self-esteem, and our level of self-differentiation, who we are as ourselves, are too low. And because they're too low, we find ourselves falling into betrayal dramas in our lives. And it's very important for those levels to change for betrayal to begin to cease in your life. And that requires you doing your work on your sense of self-worth, your self-image, your self-care, and your self-differentiation. And to do that brings about a more healthy, trusting um, experience in your life. Often we focus on the betrayer to change so we can trust again, while Others need to behave in trustworthy ways, certainly. This is not the best focus. In other words, when we have been betrayed, focusing on the betrayer for learning to trust again is often not a good road or a good path to learn to trust again. Thirdly, I use this phrase, the solution is not near the problem. Learning to trust again and a focus, it is important that we learn to trust again by focusing on past betrayals and childhood patterns and pain versus our current betrayal. In other words, heal these first so you can begin to heal a current betrayal. Classic example, a couple comes in, uh, there's been a uh, cheating occur in the relationship. Focusing on the um, only, excuse me, only focusing on the betrayal and the cheating often ends up more problematic and causing more difficulties than if we go back and begin to heal earlier betrayals. Then we can bring some up, someone up to the place where they can deal with and handle uh, more healthily, a current betrayal. And then it can begin to be released and loosened, and we have more freedom to let it go. If we have layers of un 
healed mistrust or betrayal, it is very difficult to deal with the current level of betrayal or mistrust. When addressing your current betrayal, move through the feelings of anger and blame. It's important that we begin to work on moving through those feelings. We are going to have anger. We are going to feel blame. And to move through those feelings would help, can help us begin to trust again. Move towards forgiving the one that has hurt you and forgiving yourself for any failings to protect yourself. Those two elements, I think, are important for learning to retrust. Learning to trust again comes with boundaries. Now, that doesn't mean cut off, or I'm not going to relate to other people, or I'm not going to have intimate relationships. It, because it is important that uh, for intimacy to occur, we need trusting and we need boundaries. We need both for healthy intimacy. Self-care and self-differentiation always includes boundaries. Always. So that's a healthy part of relationships. Boundariness, having no boundaries, does not equal trust. And I think sometimes we get that confused. I think it's important when someone's learning to trust again that they... Uh, seek out individual therapy and group therapy. Those are very good uh, processes that can help someone learn to trust again and be healthy and whole. Do not choose trusting no one as the solution for unhealed trust issues. Sometimes we can take a cut-off approach well, I just don't need anybody. I'm not going to trust anybody, and that'll solve my... I'm not going to get betrayed again, and I'm not going to get uh, have hurts again in the area of mistrust or trust. That is not a good solution. Also, I've also found that just because one takes a cut-off approach, that that avoids betrayal and uh, mistrust dramas. It really doesn't. It also keeps us on an island and isolated, which is not healthy or good for us. The stronger our sense of self, the less likely we are to be drawn or attracted to betrayal drama in our lives. And it will be less attracted to us. It won't come to us if we are more have more of a sense of self and more self-care. It doesn't come our way as much. The more we strengthen our self-differentiation, the more room we create for a healthy balance of trust and self-care. I can take care of myself while also being connected to and trusting someone else. I can do both. And learning to do both is very important for learning to retrust. The less enmeshed and emotionally dependent we are on others, the easier it is to forgive and to trust others. Oftentimes, enmeshment and being emotionally dependent on others has uh, creates uh, an environment in which mistrust and betrayal can occur. So reducing fusion, reducing emotional enmeshment, and being overly needy emotionally uh, can reduce repeating trust dramas and also allowing us to trust again. The bottom line is trust issues and retrusting are more about healing the self rather than focusing on the betrayal or the betrayer. And I really think that's very important, that we focus on healing ourselves. That can bring us to a place of having freedom to trust again. If you have any questions or you want to make comments, please do so on YouTube. Uh, also, you can join our channel at FamilyTreeCounseling.com. I want to thank you for listening. Contact me if I can be of help. Have a great day.